So what are we looking for here, Lee? Looking for chanterelles, one of my favourite mushrooms, and, and a mushroom that has a really, really long season usually, or can do, depending on the right conditions. Um, and it's also one of the easiest to identify. Why is it you think that we're finding them in this depression or in this gully compared to on the woodland floor? So they can grow on the woodland floor, um, but this is probably one of their most typical kind of habitats is, is alongside um, ditches and banks. They don't always have to be full of water or hold water, but just that depression enough is enough usually to, to mean that, that that area holds a lot more water. Um, so they do prefer moister ground, they, they love moss. There is, there is a rule that we're chanterelles, they form a symbiosis with certain trees. A symbiotic relationship? Yeah, so uh, it's an exchange of nutrients, etc. Um, but if you can find the tree that they're growing with, it's quite often that they will be growing with that every year. Um, uh, so you're not guaranteed to find them in the, in the same spot next year, but there's always a good chance that you will. Um, and the, you're, you're, you're quite often, you're always going to find beech trees in the woods, but you're not always going to find chanterelles unless you have the host tree. Beech is a classic, oak I find them with, and birch. Those are the three main ones for me um, that, that, that seem to hold chanterelles. Okay, brilliant. So we've just come across a, another species of mushroom. They're bright purple in colour. Beautiful looking actually. One of my favourite mushrooms, not necessarily for the flavour, but just the, 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 the look really. These are, these are more of a, a, they're a far prettier mushroom than taste. Um, that's for sure. But um, they often also, I, I seem to find these a lot when I find chanterelles, because the chanterelles often uh, are, are, you know, are growing with and around beach, uh, and these babies like it too. And they're tasty, are they? They're not the tastiest of mushrooms, but they're edible, um, and, but they look really good. So it, they're not a bad taste at all, but for, for flavour, you wouldn't rate them up there. But they look really cool next to chanterelles. Wow, lovely, lovely bit of colour there. So we've just walked about 10 minutes and we've now moved to an area in the woodland where there's birch trees, which are these white trees here. You can see, you see the, the white bark on them, as well as pine trees. And Lee has just found another species of mushroom. This one is a Scarlatina belete, quite closely related to the sep. Um, but care is needed with this one because it can cause gastric upset or does cause gastric upset uh, if eaten raw and can cause gastric upset in some people. So uh, like with all mushrooms really, even seps, uh, it's always worth just trying a little bit first and then... A little bit at a time to see yeah. if or not yeah. they agree with your body. Yeah, it's always worth just being a little bit cautious first time. But I'm just gonna cut this mushroom just to show you one of its identifying... Oh, I know this one. Look at that. And then that changes color. From yellow to blue, so as soon it's quite as it's vivid. Cut, you can see Beautiful. that colour change straight away, wow. It's amazing. But this has to be cooked, if you're going to eat it, it has to be fully cooked. Um, uh, and like I said, care is needed because one of my friends is now allergic to seps. Really? Because, yeah, two of my friends have, uh, are, are um, Oh look at that, we've just given it, what, 20, 30 seconds and look at the colour yeah. now. Amazing. Incredible. So your friend is now allergic to seps and is there a reason yeah, for that? Yeah, well because of this. Because they both ate under undercooked so, well, they think they both ate undercooked scarlet, scarletina beliefs. Wow! And and now have an intolerance to seps, which is a bit of a shame. Wow! And now what we've come across are winter chanterelles. And before we pick them, you might be able to see them. In fact, you can just see how camouflaged they are when you're looking down, at especially this damp, wet day, looking at the wet leaves on the forest floor. But as you can probably see already, yes, they're in the middle of the screen, and Lee is about to pick them. So there's one, two, there's like three there. Beautiful little things, aren't they? Mm. 
Lee, would you say that they've been eaten already by squirrels? Or no, think... they're just they, they're just a funny one. They may have been they may have been eaten there by slugs. Oh yeah. Oh, and there as well. Yeah. So do we want these ones? Yes, please. Um, but they are they're a funny one. They do come up in quite odd shapes. So they do come up in quite weird shapes. You can see Lee's brought his dogs along today. Two little Jack Russells. Ashish, ashish. And I've got my dog Amber right there. Okay. So would these have the same sort of lifespan when it comes to, would you leave the smaller ones for these winter chanterelles and then come back later on for them to be bigger? Yeah, like so definitely. So we were discussing earlier how um, uh, golden chanterelles take a lot longer uh, than, than some other mushrooms to kind of to go from button or pin to, to pickable. Uh, these are another example. These will can grow quite slowly um, and they'll just slowly keep getting bigger. You know, we're, we're, we're right at the beginning of the season for these, so they should last till January, February, March. So we've now moved down. We aren't too far from a road. You might be able to hear a road in the background, but this really is a stunning woodland. There's all sorts of woodland paths here. And we've just come across, again, another winter chanterelle growing in amongst all this grass. That's a nice. That's a beauty. Nice one right there. That's what I preferred to have. These winter chanterelles are so camouflaged. If you look at that, it really blends in with the rest of the ground with all those those dark leaves. So I think you really need a, tra a good trained eye to find these. So just to show you how camouflaged these winter chanterelles are, you might or you might not be able to see the winter chanterelle in this shot. There it is, right there. Oh, and there's a few more right here. Look at that, oh, and there. Oh, quite a bit of a family of them down there. They're so hard to identify from the top, but as soon as you look from, from the side, you can see those yellow stems. So just next to these winter chanterelles, I found one of my other fa one of my other favourite mushrooms, which is a hedgehog. Um, it's quite easy to identify this one, um, as you can see, this one has spines underneath it, as opposed to gills or sp or paws, like a bleat, and they kind of come off like that. That's where it gets its name. These can grow in huge rings, and actually, so there's more there, more under the more. dog. And, and as we're walking along here, there's a, a huge ring, almost a massive ring of these mushrooms. Some more here and here. And you can see sometimes they get really, really big. There you go. Oh wow. All the way out. And it's oh, just under ring. the dog. Just along here. And there. So it's a few, one whole ring. Massive. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna take these home. I'm gonna eat these. I don't I don't tend to find them very nice to dry uh, and they can be quite soggy to pickle. Um, so it's not really for my taste. I much prefer these fried off dry. I dry fry these. Dry them, okay. And then I, I no dry fry them, uh, and then I put a little bit of butter in at the end because if you right. put oil in it before, to fry them with oil or butter, they can be really wet. Right, right. Cool. So Lee, you got one more question for you. What's your favourite way when it comes to cooking chanterelles? So very quick. Um, I I tend to make sure you've um, cleaned them well. We're not washing them, we're just prepping them like that, cut any dirt off, into a really hot pan, or medium hot pan, um, and, and, I, and completely dry. So I toast them, I kind of on a, almost want to colour them in the pan without any butter or oil. And what that does is it kind of slightly reduces the, uh, the water in there. When you think they're kind of nearly done, I take them off the heat, then I add a knob of butter. And if you wanted to make a cream sauce from there, you add cream, right. uh, reduce it back down. But I like just simply with butter. Well, there's a good tip for you guys if you're at home or if you're out picking this season. That's Lee's way of cooking chanterelles.